Welcome to Sunday Citizen. There's a lot of info to go over this week, so let's get going. On Around the Verse, we learned that the play with the dev session failed due to a bug on the server side. It's been fixed now, so it's been rescheduled to Monday at 1 p.m. PST. Design for the box art will include four covers that together form a large picture. The Constellation, Hornet, and Freelancer are currently locked down, but there's an open vote for a ship for the fourth box cover. We got more updates from studios around the globe. CIG Santa Monica is redoing the Constellation and Freelancer. The Constellation will be revamped to use their new modular system for ship interiors. Foundry 42 is working with new skeletal rigs as well as facial model rigs and are still working on a character port system based on the ship port system. Ilphonic described the grapple beam attachment teased last week on Sandy's Facebook. It basically grabs surfaces like a magnet to pull you in zero G. They're also working on ammo crates and recharge stations to reload combustion and energy weapons. The CIG Austin studio is working on items including a defibrillator for a social module release. We'll have access to a medical unit as well. They're also working on implementing smart objects for AI systems to help create a living universe where the AI interacts with the objects around them. This week's sneak peek was a video of Gold Horizon. Here you can see the gravity generator, as it was seen in the PAX Australia FPS demo. If it's turned off or destroyed, the station will lose its gravity, and the occupants must traverse in zero G. This here looks like a cargo bay. And this looks like a crew area. You can see lockers and an area to lounge. On Sandy's Facebook, we got two pics of the reworked Cutlass. Also, we got a look at an escape pod. Details show the lights, an open close button, and maneuvering thrusters. This week, CIG gave us a sneak peek behind the scenes of the motion capture currently underway at Imaginarium. They're streaming pre-viz directly into the CryEngine for the first time to improve performance. They're working on combat now and are consulting with a military advisor and experienced soldiers to help with realism. They also test alien movement with an experienced stunt actor. This week we also got another design post detailing the mining career. Players that want to mine can either do it freelance or via another entity like a guild. Freelance miners get all the reward, but they also take all the risk. They do, however, need to find an area to mine, a way to refine what they have mined, and ultimately a place to sell it. They also may need to hire security depending on where they mine and where they'll ship to. Contracted miners don't have to deal with all of these problems, but will get paid less. Prospecting sites require scanning, and this information can be held publicly and picked up at a TDD or bought from an information broker. There will be five types of specialists, pilot, scan operator, beam operator, cargo operator, and refinery operator. Each specialty is designed to require skill. Pilots navigate asteroid fields, position their ship around the target asteroid, and pull out if things get dangerous. Scan operators inject RMAPs, or remote material analysis packages, that give the pilot and scan operator telemetry as well as composition data of the asteroid. R maps are manually guided and there will be different approaches depending on the surface they're trying to analyze. Beam operators control the mining beam by position as well as power. Too much power in the wrong area can cause explosions. They will also need to keep in mind seismic activity. Cargo operators scan fragments liberated by the mining beam and can either bring them in with an attractor beam or push them with a repulsor beam. Refinery operators control the routing of the ore to specialized processing units. Operator errors can cause equipment to fail and slow down the refinement process. 
equipment may need to be replaced in order to continue. To go with the mining career design post, we also got a mining ship, the RSI Orion. And damn, does this one look good. It's 170 meters long with a mass of 5.4 million kgs. It can haul 600 freight units and 16,288 freight units of bulk ore. Fully loaded, this thing will maneuver like a Centaurian mud pig. The RSI Orion features an onboard refinery, as well as saddlebag class storage units to contain the mined material. It's really meant as an all-in-one mining solution. It crews six. It has two turrets, three tractor beams, and a mining laser. It also comes with a scanning array and is compatible with Mark IV remote mining devices. It's available now with lifetime insurance and a bunch of goodies for $325. The concept sale ends March 2nd, but you can expect to see this in the future during other sales like the anniversary sale, but without LTI. Yo, this week I wanted to give a special shout out to the Imperial News Network. The Imperial News Network is run by a group of individuals that have a love for Star Citizen and they have a lot of free time. It seems that they can go through all of the information and bring it down, distill it. For those of you that just don't have time to go and watch an hour and a half of Reverse the Verse or 45 minutes of Around the Verse and 10 for the Chairman and all of the videos and content that CIG is producing. So I want to give these guys a shout out. You should definitely check them out if you want to know the skinny on Star Citizen. They have transcripts for all of these things, so you can read through them quickly. When you're on your break, you can check it out on Reddit. You can check it out on their website, imperialnews.network. So thanks a lot, guys, for um, for making this material. I, re I really appreciate it. All right, we're going to keep this week's episode short and sweet. So thank you very much for watching. I'll see you all next week. Take care. Peace.